being here. Every one of you guys have played a big role um, in Emily's and my life over the last few months, um, especially with what we recently heard, the news and stuff. You guys have been really faithful friends, good friends, um, calling us, emailing us, uh, meeting with us late at night, crying with us, uh, drinking beer with us. Um, all, all that stuff has been really sweet, so um, we, we have been really lucky. Uh, to, and it's really cool after three years of being in St. Louis to see um, God's faithfulness to me and to Emily and to Blakely um, to have a community here that I never thought was possible, um, especially when I first came. I was, I was really um, sad and it was really hard because I felt alone. But I sit here and see that God uh, did not forget me and hasn't forgotten my family. Um, so that's a, a beautiful sign to me. Um, of God's faithfulness. Um, I want to say thank you to Danny and Tyler, Julia, uh, and Michael, Dory, and Skyler for uh, putting this together. Um, I feel like we should clap for them because it's very awesome. Um, no, yeah, they, they threw this together. Um, they, they got all the food, all the drinks, all the stuff um, to celebrate Blakely's life um, and to celebrate our little family. So uh, I feel blessed and loved. So thank you guys. Um, one of the things um, that you guys all know, and it's kind of the elephant in the room a little bit, is that uh, t today is a little different. Um, tonight's a little different than like a normal uh, baby shower or normal kind of celebration. Uh, we have received really hard news about uh, Blakely, and um, some of you guys know, but it's called Alabar Holoprosencephaly. Um, and Blakely has, um, has a cleft palate and a cleft lip. Um, she's she is uh, alive right now, but the doctors think that she's going to pass away during birth or soon after birth, and that was the last word that we had received from the doctor. Um, we'll be going weekly um, and stuff as well, um, and the NICU people will be there, um, our doctor will be there, um, other doctors will be there um, when we are having the baby, but the news is, is that it's not going to be probably, um, she probably won't be compatible with life. So, yeah, sitting in that. Uh, right now in this moment has been really hard for us as um, the days have gone by it gets kind of harder and harder um, and a little bit heavier and heavier um, quoting one of my favorite movies uh, Shrek it's kind of like <laughs> an onion and, and it's peeling off the layers each layer keeps coming and, and we think that we're at the final layer and then there's another one um, and I think it's gonna get um, even messier and messier so um, thank you guys for being here um, sitting in this moment with us in this mess with us. Um, this is a sign that uh, that the gospel is true and that and Jesus is true, and I'm really thankful. Um, so, the most important thing I wanna say tonight and share with you guys tonight is that tonight, even in this context and even in this moment, is a celebration. Tonight is a, I wanna call it a gospel party, uh, in all caps, I put that. So I wanna emphasize the gospel party for you guys. Uh, and I want to take you maybe a little bit through what we've been through. In early August, I still remember Emily coming into the bedroom, sitting on the edge of the bed, crisscross applesauce, um, and like waking me up in the morning and her looking at me and being like, guess what? And I'm like, I don't know, you bought Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to eat Krispy Kreme or something, or we're going to Chick-fil-A for breakfast. <laughs> um, but uh, what it was actually was I was going to have a little baby and she was holding a stick and she said I'm pregnant um, and I was excited uh, I couldn't believe it and especially the night before we had prayed together and asked God to give us a, a baby and, and we asked uh, the Lord and literally the next day we found out that we had a baby and God had already blessed us with that and that God had heard me and had listened to me and so we were excited, we were dreaming, we were coming up with plans, coming up with boy names, baby names, uh, doing the whole thing. Uh, we went in early, found out that we were having a little girl, um, about 14, 15 weeks, um, and she was bouncing, going crazy, uh, dancing. Uh, it was, it, it's, that, that was a really crazy ultrasound just to see such a small thing that had so many human features um, bouncing around in the womb. Uh, and, and so we found out we had a girl. I was a little disappointed about the girl. <laughs> I really wanted a boy, uh, but we were having a little girl, and so uh, I was also freaking out a little bit too, thinking about uh, what it all entails with having a girl. And, um, and I'm wearing pink because, you know, I'm having a girl. And I'm excited about having a girl right now, so God has changed me. Um, 
But yeah, so we were excited, and then about around four more weeks later, 19 weeks, we went in kind of for, you know, to get the official confirmation on the gender, um, and for our checkup, and so we were in the ultrasound room, I remember we wanted to record the heartbeat, so I was recording it on my phone, and we were seeing the pictures on the ultrasound, and we were, we were really excited um, about it, and the ultrasound text, uh, the ultrasound tech dismissed us, and we, so we sat in the waiting room in, in the fluorescent lit uh, waiting room, waiting for kind of you know the doctor to come in and say everything's good, um, everything's fine, uh, you guys are good to go home. Um, we'll see you in a few more weeks. Uh, but in that moment, sitting in that room, I uh, I took a picture of them, and I still look at that picture um, because it's the moment right before we found out um, that our world was crashing in, and, and she's glowing in the picture. Um, and I love looking at it, and I love remembering um, that moment, because also in that moment, I remember thinking in my head um, about how lucky we were to have this baby, this little girl, and then I even thought this in my mind, and, and this is why it sticks out. I still remember thinking this. is because of what's happened. I remember thinking, like, I'm so glad that she's healthy, that she's, you know, perfect, you know, that everything seems to be going well and good, and then I remember thinking, man, it must be so hard for parents that get hard news that their baby is not actually what they think it is. It's, you know, going through a hard time, a difficult time, um, and that something's going wrong. And I just remember thinking, that must be really hard. And I was like, how can God do things like that? How can the God who knits babies in the womb um, and know people's lives and plans ordain that and let that happen? Uh, and two minutes or three minutes later, the doctor came in uh, breaking that news to us that our girl was going to be a different little girl um, with a different face and um, a different life than most uh, girls are going to have, and uh, I felt sweaty, my heart sank, my stomach turned, and uh, yeah, that was a really, really tough moment to think about what was happening to us in that moment, and all the questions that I was thinking about before were starting to become really real to me um, as a parent of a girl that's going to be different. Uh, so I remember... After that point, we, we were there all day sitting in the room. Uh, we went from that point, uh, from the ultrasound tech to the hospital, sat in that room. Uh, we had examination after examination, hard news after hard news. The news kept getting worse and worse. It wasn't just, hey, you know, she's uh, developing a little slower. Oh no, now she has, uh, she has uh, brain malformations. Um, and, and now she, we're looking at low bar, semi low bar, alibar, holoprosencephaly, and she might fall into one of those degrees. And I remember sitting in, in the room um, with Emily, in the, and then it was just silent. We had been talking about it all day. It's at the end of the day, around 4 p.m., um, and we'd been there since the morning to the afternoon. And I remember, I remember sitting in the silence and feeling this feeling of, I don't want this, and I don't want uh, this girl, um, and I don't want this life for her, um, and I don't really want this child, and I don't want it for me. Um, and for Emily, and we we had to sit in that moment, and in that moment, as the doctor came in and and offered and said, "Hey, we're willing to do a termination," um, and and actually sit there and hear those words, and maybe somewhat have some compassion um, in that moment, for, where we have always overridden that moment for people as like, "How can you do such a thing?" To like, well, this actually kind of feels like something we would want to do, an easy way out, a way to forget, a way to not have pain, a way to not hurt. Um, and I, I remember sitting in that moment, and, and we had faith that we didn't know what was going to happen, um, but we just believed that God's calling us to keep her, even though we maybe not necessarily want her. Uh, and saying that now as, as her daddy um, is really hard for me to say, because as I think about tonight, I, and I think about that moment um, about four months ago, um, I, I uh, smile and I, and I praise God because uh, I have seen him take this man um, that I described just a second ago and soften him and break him into sweet submission, into grace and mercy and power of God. Uh, and I want to testify to you guys tonight that I sit here and I stand here and Emily does too and that we say we love Blakely. Um, and that we love her and that we want her. Um, and it's only because of what Jesus has done in our hearts over the last few months. Uh, tonight, I say that if you place all the babies in the world before me and ask me which baby I would want, 
which baby that I would choose to love, I would say I want Blakely. I would choose this one that's sitting right here. Um, I choose her and I see her as my gift, my blessing, my hope. And she is my little bumblebee. Um, they would say to me, oh, but she has this problem. She has this face. She looks like this. She, she's going to have these difficulties. She won't be able to swallow. She won't be able to eat. She won't be able um, to grow correctly. And I will still and always choose her because of who my God is and who Jesus is. Um, and that is the work that has been done in both of us. I love her and I am honored to be her dad and to be part of her life. I have been honored by her life and how she has lived and how she has shown me Jesus. I love how she's kicked my fingers when I tickle her feet. I love how she bounces in the ultrasound and is shy when the camera is on her. I love that she likes to touch her toes and wave her hands. And I love that she has her mommy's feet. And I love that she is fighting. I love her face and the way she looks. I love who she is. And so I really wish that I was giving this speech 25 years later at a wedding. And I wish I was giving this speech 18 years later at a graduation. And I wish I was giving this speech uh, when she was graduating kindergarten or at a birthday party. I wish that I could be whispering these words to her as she grows up. Um, I wish that I could be the one telling her stories about Jesus um, as she ages. Um, I wish that I could be the one eating ice cream with her at midnight, like I like to do. Um, I wish that I could push her on the swing set at the park and hold her hand for as long as she will let me. And I wish that I could be her daddy um, for the rest of my life, and that she would be the one bearing me. I wish that I could be the one that kissed her to bed every night. And I wish that I could be the one um, that cries with her. When boys break their heart. But God has made other plans. And dare I say, maybe he's even made better plans that I don't even understand. Oh, man. Uh, he has always owned her life. And he has always had the choice to take her, to let her stay here. And he has made her life to me over these last um, eight months so sweet and good to me. God has shown me that what is happening is not the way it's supposed to be. And he has whispered, whispered to me that he is going to make this right. I don't know how he's going to do this, um, but I do remember sitting in the doctor's office when I first heard about Blakely's diagnosis, and I wondered how was I ever going to love this girl. And so I sit here absolutely in love with her, and absolutely adoring her, and wishing that I could hold her right now. I don't want this to happen, but this is the way it has to happen. And I'm not okay with it, but I am at peace with it. Because God has the final say over my life and Emily's life and your life and over Blakely's life. And sin and death have no place over my little girl or over God's little girl. She is beautiful and wonderfully made, and she is mine, and she is God's, and she is love. And he, she has even shown me how to love better. So tonight, I want us to celebrate not what's going to happen, but I want us to celebrate the life that is already kicking and moving and growing inside Emily and in our hearts um, and in this world and on this planet. I want us to celebrate the impact that she's had on mine and Emily's life and over our family's life and even over the lives of the people here in St. Louis and even across the world, as I've heard from people um, overseas even share about how uh, she is beautiful, and she is wonderful, and how they love her. Uh, tonight, we celebrate that the gospel is very real. That it really does have hands and feet, and that it really does involve real people. Um, tonight, we celebrate because Blakely is alive. And tonight, we celebrate because God is good. Tonight, we celebrate because Jesus is still alive, and Blakely will never die. So every smile, laugh, joke, song, and dance that you put on tonight it's a gospel proclamation. We drink, we eat, we laugh, and celebrate because God loves and God wins and Jesus lives. So please, please, will you tonight with me just party hard <laughs> and celebrate my little girl with me and, and joke about it and laugh about it because it's, it's not over. It's not finished. It's not over. It's not finished. 
So I would like for us to go into a time of prayer. If Skylar could lead us, we would love for you guys to pray for us. Um, and thank you for letting me share and cry a little bit um, with you guys. Um, I love Blakely, and I know you guys love her too. Um, and we uh, we know that there's no really real way how to help us. Um, none of us can save her, um, but we do. We do know that this means a lot, and that your prayers and your emails and your words of encouragement and your presence means a lot, um, and it's gone a long way. Um, and you guys are always welcome in our homes, and always welcome to be part of our family. Um, and we love you guys, so uh, we really appreciate you guys can pray for us.